school. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Janine. I'm a physical therapist and I help future physical therapists get accepted into physical therapy school. So today my topic is five ways to stand out, right? Because if you're thinking about applying to PT school or you've already applied or you're in the process of applying, you've probably heard people tell you that it's basically impossible to get accepted into P PT school because it's so competitive and there's thousands of applicants and it just seems absolutely insane. And yet you're expected to take the same classes and do pretty much the same thing. So it's like, okay, well, how am I supposed to stand out from these people? What's gonna make me look better in terms of why should I go to this school versus other people? So I'm gonna talk about five different ways that you can do this super easy, super straightforward, and you can start today. So my first topic is improving your grades in your core classes. So um, a lot of people tend to get focused or obsess over your your GPA, right? And so although it's it's cool because if you're like me, I had my under undergraduate um, G. Uh, major i forgot what it was called for a second my undergraduate major was exercise science and so i had to take a lot of classes that were like history classes or like you know things that like had absolutely no did not mean anything and so although it's okay if you don't do as great in those classes i would say those are probably easier to do better in so kind of you know try and aim for good grades in those but at the same time if you're taking a lot of other classes that are more so which we call the core classes so like anatomy physics um uh, calculus chemistry uh, then you know those things that are listed if you go to your future schools they will list their uh list of prerequisite requirements and those are the classes that you want to get the best grades on um, and so when it comes to, because we don't really have, we don't have all the time in the world, right? We only have 24 hours in a day. So you got to think about time management when it comes to this. And let's say, you know, you're taking a bunch of hard classes and you're like, what should I focus my energy more so on? Focus your energy on those classes because if you're getting an A in anatomy, but you get a B minus in history, then I'm pretty sure they're gonna look at that and they're gonna still, that's gonna be import, more important to them. So if you focus on, if you get straight A's in all of those core classes, that is gonna help you immensely. Um, and so, and also I will point out that if you do well in those most important classes, opportunities are going to snowball from there and this brings me to my to um my second topic which is your your um extracurricular so building your resume this is my second way to stand out from the other applicants so yeah you want to get a mixture of um things that are so in extracurriculars i mean being involved in clubs being a tutor uh being doing volunteer work um doing research different things like that that you're gonna list on your resume when you're applying that are gonna help you stand out but what's the important thing to note here is that yes you want to do a bunch of things that are related to the physical therapy world so that might mean like like i said um doing research i was a tutor for a couple of classes and i was also a ta for a couple of classes like i was a ta for anatomy i was a ta for um bio biomechanics i think it was called biomechanics it was like the class where it's a combination of anatomy and uh, physics love that class um and so I did that. I also, um, I did research with my professors. So back to the topic, my first topic is improving your grades in those core classes. I really focused on doing so well in those classes and my professors saw that. And so they decided to, um, they asked me to get involved in research projects that they were doing and help with that or be a TA for their class. So these things will kind of fall into place if you focus on the first one. Um, so you want to make sure you have a good solid amount of things in your resume that are PT related. So things that you can say, 
okay, well, I took, I was a tutor in anatomy and anatomy is super important as a physical therapist because we have to know this, right? But yet, let alone, it's more than that. Um, and I'm gonna get the, into that a little bit more on a later topic. But this kind of brings me to my third point, which is do things that are unique to you. So don't think that um, because you like knitting that you don't want to get involved in a knitting club or like something like that because that doesn't relate to physical therapy at all. Or maybe you love fishing or like, like me, I play instruments. So I was involved in the school orchestra and I took a, I took a couple extra music classes and, um, and different things like that. And so that, those things, or I volunteered at state parks, those things are <laughs> what's going to make you, because let me just give you an example. Now, out of PT school, as a practicing physical therapist, I'm constantly working with different types of people all day long, and it is a way for me to connect with my patients, right? Oh, you play guitar? Me too. What kind? Are you a Gibson? Or are you a Fender person? Blah, 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 blah. So it just kind of helps you relate to people and make connections with your patients, which is something that is so, so, so important, and that it kind of stems from these extracurricular activities that make you unique and different. They want to see that. They're going to remember. There's going to be, there is going to be probably, yeah, okay, maybe there's 50 or 100 other people who also did research and who also were a calculus tutor and who also was were in the physical therapy club. That Those things are great, but what's going to really make you sparkle and stand out from the crowd is those unique things for you that no one else can can say that they can do but you because that's what makes you you. And so like another example, um, one of my PT school interviews, they asked me, I talked, they saw that I was involved in music and I kind of was like, yeah, I really want to learn how to play the banjo. Didn't expect to say that on a physical therapy interview, but the lady that was interviewing me loved that. She loved that. And they called me four days later and said, we want you to be part of our, our school. We love you, you, you know? And so I know that those things are what really made me stand out. And also because they can see that you're passionate about it. You feel comfortable talking about it because it's something that you love. So that is also super important. Um, so my fourth, my fourth topic is observation hours. So this is another point where it is something that is absolutely required for most physical therapy schools. Um, and this is something that's probably going to be the same, um, similar amongst other applicants, right? Um, I will point out you probably want to get a mixture of settings. So like you want to get an inpatient setting. Inpatient just means that the people are sleeping there. So like a hospital setting um, that can be acute or subacute. Subacute means that they are not quite safe to go home from the hospital. So they um, are sent to the rehab department where they stay the night and they get more rehab. Um, it can also be something like a long-term care facility, uh, where like a skilled nursing facility, uh, places like that. But you also want to get outpatient experience. So you could get uh, pediatrics. You can get work at a go to a clinic. Different things, right? But here's where you're gonna stand out from the other applicants. When you show up to your observation hours, don't just be passive. Yes, it is literally called observation hours, and you physically cannot touch the patients but you can still show up and try and make this space that you're going to a po more positive environment than when you came, when you left versus when you came. Does that make sense? When you leave it a better, more positive environment than when you found it. There we go. Um, and so by this, you're gonna show up and you're gonna say to all the patients, okay, let me give you an example. I did an observation hours in, um, in a subacute rehab at a hospital and I would walk around to the patient's rooms when I didn't have anything to do and I would introduce myself and I would say listen I'm just a volunteer I might not be able to directly help you but you can if you see me around and you need something you can always ask and I can help you find the person that you need or whatever you need um, and that made a difference in those people I started 
ha trying to make a difference in my physical ther the physical therapist that I was observing in their day. So cleaning the equipment, taking action. Um, maybe I would go and talk to their patients and make sure that they would be ready when they were ready f when the physical therapist was going to be ready for them. Or you know, take any kind of opportunity or go to your uh, the person you're observing and say, what about this exercise? Or uh, ask questions. Even if you can't think of questions on the spot. Think about questions before you go in and then ask them there. This is showing that you're interest, interested and you're taking action and you're trying to learn and observe and, and soak in all the information and you're not just being passive and sitting there and um, you know just being like a fly on the wall. Um, and this is going to get you one, you never know what other opportunities it's going to lead you to. For instance, when I did that, um, the director of the rehab saw that and she asked me to be a part of her swallowing research study Which was another thing to add to my resume and then I also got an amazing Letter of reference from her. So think about this trend where that things start to snowball off of each other And so my last tip is I'm just looking at my notes um, So I don't miss anything. My last tip is throughout this entire process you want to keep a log of all of the challenges that you face or things that you learn. So for instance, maybe you, I'll give you an example. Um, I was doing a research project and I had set up a time to meet with a professor so I could interview him. And I was already extremely busy on top of my coursework and all the extra stuff I was doing. So I didn't really have a whole lot of time to spare, right? So. Um, I decided, so I showed up, went out of time, and he was nowhere to be found. He forgot. And this was like a crucial time for me. It was like this hour of my day, it could have just been wasted, and that's so frustrating, and now I'm going to have to go back and redo this. But I chose to take advantage of this hour, and I, I brought my books, and I started studying. I started doing other things while I was waiting for him. And so that was a challenge that I later wrote about in my uh, supplemental information when I was applying about a time I overcame a challenge or, um, you know, because these are what's, the, so anything, like maybe you were a tutor and you had someone that um, was challenging, was had a difficulty learning, but you kind of got through to them or anything that you can think of, any lesson that you learn or challenge that you overcome or something that you thought was interesting, write this all down because these are the things that's now gonna make everything, the groundwork come to life. What skills have you developed? What type of char characteristics are, have you inhibited? And what lessons have you learned? And that is what you can spit out during your interview on your supplemental information, all these other things that's gonna piece everything together and make you really stand out from the crowd because I guarantee you, if there is a thousand applicants, none of them are probably doing that. And so I hope this is helpful. I also want to point out that I do have an entire course on how to get accepted into physical therapy school where I go over um, everything when it comes to improving your grades, making uh, connections with your professors, how to get letters of reference, uh, observation hours, taking the GRE, the supplemental, the interview, literally everything. Um, everything that you need to know to set yourself up for success and more and so you can definitely it's called um, I will put the link down below and so you can check out my website and see if you want to take my course um, I would definitely recommend it and if you have any other questions or any videos that you want me to cover um, please please leave a message in the comments and like and like and subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching I hope this was helpful